Hey guys, what's going on? In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the steps of hosting a static website using Amazon S3. Once everything's all set up, I'll show you how to associate a custom domain name with your website using Amazon Route 53. If that sounds good, please continue watching this video, and if you find these tutorials helpful in general, please consider subscribing to this channel. Alright, let's do this! Amazon S3 is a general-purpose object storage service, and it just happens to be perfect for hosting websites. Now, short disclaimer, S3 is really good for hosting static websites, that is, websites that just use front-end code such as HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. It does not support server-side scripting languages such as PHP, JSP, or ASP.NET. However, you can set up a static client-side website in S3 and then integrate that with a serverless backend using services such as API Gateway, AWS Lambda, DynamoDB, or one of the other Amazon relational database services. All right, now I've set up a sample website that I'd like to show you, and notice it's running at localhost 3000. So this is just on my local desktop, and it's a Hexall Energy Company. Uh, this is just a dummy website that I've set up for another tutorial that I'm currently working on on AWS Cognito. All right, so this is what I want to host today, and uh, let's walk through the steps on how to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and sign into the AWS console, and let's head over to S3. Okay, so our strategy here is going to be to set up two S3 buckets. Our first bucket is going to have the name of our domain, domain.com, without the www. Then we'll set up a second bucket with www.domain.com. And the reason for that is because technically www is a subdomain, so we need to have a separate bucket for that. And then what we'll do is redirect traffic from the www bucket to our domain.com bucket. All right, and if that doesn't make sense, then I'm sure it'll, it'll be clear once we get it set up and once you see it. So go ahead and click on Create Bucket. All right, now enter in the domain name that you want to use for your website. And if you don't really plan on purchasing a domain name, but you just want to go through the motions here and see how this is set up, feel free to make anything up. So I'm going to use hexallenergy.com. Okay, make sure your spelling's correct. And go ahead and click on Create. Oh, also make sure that the region is set to the region you want to use, which is probably the one that's closest geographically to your location. All right, and then go ahead and click Create. All right, now we'll do the same thing, except we'll add www to the name. Okay, and go ahead and click on Create for that one. All right, so far so good. So step two is going to be to upload our website content. So go ahead and click into your first folder without the subdomain. All right, go ahead and click on Upload. All right, now you have two options here, either to add files via this dialog that will pop up or drag and drop. Um, now, a tip that I've learned through experience here is that if you use the dialog, if you have any folders under your website content, it won't actually add them. So it's only going to add individual files. So I've got a static folder here, so I'm going to actually drag and drop my files just so that it captures everything that I want. All right. Now, this website is just a simple React.js site, and I've used the npm run build script to generate a build folder of static assets. So I'm just going to upload these files right here. All right, so I'm going to drag and drop these over and click Upload. All right, that looks good. So all of my website files have been added. Now the next thing we need to do is to add a policy to our bucket to allow public access to the website files. So go ahead and click on Permissions, click on Bucket Policy, and I'm going to copy and paste a sample policy that I got from the AWS documentation. Now I will include this in the description of the video so you guys can just copy and paste it. Um, so just go ahead and copy and paste it into your policy and change the example.com to match your actual website domain. So hexallenergy.com. And click on save. Access denied. 
Okay, so if you get this message, and you probably will, the reason is that S3 by default disallows the addition of any kind of policy that would allow public access to your bucket. It's just a safety mechanism, so we have to override that. So let's go ahead and click on, I believe it's properties. Oh, I'm sorry. It's public access settings underneath your permissions tab. All right. Okay, so go ahead and click on edit. And we what we want to do is deselect the two options under manage public bucket policies for this bucket. That's a tongue twister. All right, so go ahead and deselect those two and click save. Go ahead and type in confirm. Click on confirm. All right, so we should be able to update our bucket policy now. So let's try that again. Let's go back to bucket policy. All right, copy and paste that in here one more time. Change our domain and save. All right, that looks good. So you can just uh, obviously disregard this message. It's just telling you that you've enabled public access to your bucket. Um, that's okay because we're hosting a website. So we need people to have public access if they want to see it. All right, so the next step is going to be to enable website hosting on our primary bucket. That is the hexallenergy.com one without the www. So make sure you're still on that bucket. Head on over to the properties tab and go ahead and click on static website hosting. All right, so all we have to do here is select the first option, which is use this bucket to host a website. Okay, so under index document, just enter in the file name of the entry, the entry point of your website, which may be index.html, maybe index.htm. Just make sure that corresponds with your initial file. Um, now, another thing that I've learned through trial and error here is that you want to specify the same file as your error document, unless you have a specific error.html or something like that. But if you don't, just go ahead and enter the same index.html. And the reason for that is if, if you don't do that, and the first time I did this, I left this, uh, I left this field blank. And the issue I ran into is that I could only see the first page of the website. I couldn't click to any of the other pages. Um, and it took me a while to figure out the reason why. So just make sure that you have something under error document. All right. Uh, okay. Now that's all we have to do. Go ahead and click save. Okay. Now let's go back to our S3 landing page. This time we need to do some configuration in our www version. Okay. So go ahead and click into your www bucket. Now we're looking for the same thing. So go to properties, static website hosting. And here's where we'll configure our redirects. So go ahead and select, select the second option this time, redirect requests. And under target bucket or domain, we want to enter the domain of our first bucket. All right. So hexallenergy.com, the one without the www. And go ahead and click on save. Now note that this redirect is not going to work until we actually get the domain set up because it's pointing at our literal domain. So go ahead and click save. And at this point, we should be able to use our Amazon provided temporary domain name for our first bucket to view our website. So let's go ahead, um, go back to your first bucket, which in my case, it's Hexall Energy. And we need to find the temporary domain, which I believe if we go into back into, um, sorry, the properties tab and static web website hosting, we should find that. Yep, here we go. So go ahead and put this URL, this temporary endpoint, into the browser. And there we go. So our site is already up and running. Um, the only thing left to do is to put in our custom domain name. Uh, but for now, we can access it right here through this Amazon-provided temporary domain. All right, so the hard part's done. Um, so in the next part of the video, we will we'll go through how to set up a custom domain with Amazon Route 53. All right, guys, so the next step is going to be to head on over to Route 53. Okay, so go back up to Services. Um, if you don't see it in your history or right here, you can just always search for it in the search bar. That should pop right up. Okay, so uh, step number one is to actually register a domain. And now, if you already have a domain name ready, you can disregard this part, obviously. Now, I've registered my domain name this morning. 
um, but it's just a very simple process. Go ahead and search for uh, available domain first. So something like, you know, just to show you a quick example here. So just go ahead and check and confirm availability. And then once you've done that, go ahead and add it to your cart and scroll down, click continue, and then it'll prompt you to, to add in your credit card and your personal information, all that kind of stuff. So once you do that, you'll get a message saying that it could take up to three days for Amazon to register and configure your domain name. Um, in my experience, it never takes longer than an hour or two. Uh, I think I got my confirmation email like an hour or two after I uh, registered this domain this morning. So um, feel free to pause the video or come back once you receive that confirmation email from Amazon and we'll go to the next steps from there. All right, so once you've received that confirmation email from Amazon, uh, go ahead and navigate back to Route 53 and you should see one or more items under DNS management. So go ahead and click on hosted zones. All right, and go ahead and click on your domain that you've just registered. All right, so what we need to do here is create two record sets, one for domain.com and one for your www.domain.com. And a record set is just a simple document that describes the flow of traffic from your web, from your domain. Um, in other words, what is your domain pointing to, okay? So go ahead and click on record set. So for the first one, uh, just leave this, uh, leave name as the default, okay? And make sure that your domain is specified over, over to the right here. Okay, you can leave the type as default. For alias, change it to yes, okay? And if you click into this input here, you should get some options and go ahead and select the domain.com version of your domain, okay? All right, um, leave everything else as default and click on create. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna do the same thing, um, only with a slight difference for your www bucket. So go ahead and click again on create record set. This time under name, add www, okay? And alias, again, switch that to yes. This time you should have a different option if you click on the input and choose the www version of your domain, okay? And again, leave everything else as default and go ahead and click on create. All right, and that is it. So it may take up to 30 minutes for your new domain to propagate through the internet. So uh, we can check right away, but it may take a couple of minutes at least. So let me, let me just give this a try here. Oops, and I'm just trying to copy and paste that, but all I have to do is modify what I have already here in my browser. And it's already there. Oh my gosh, that's super fast. <laughs> so awesome. Um, but if you don't see it right away, don't worry. Uh, first, try to clear your cache in your browser. And if that doesn't work, then just wait a couple of minutes and it'll likely show up within minutes. All right. All right, guys. So that concludes this uh, tutorial of hosting your website on S3. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. Um, if you guys enjoy these videos, you want to see more, then please consider subscribing to my channel and hopefully I will see you in the next video. All right, guys, take care. Bye. Thank you.